Hello and good evening. Welcome to this channel. In this video, we'll be looking at the class, mathematics class, on the introduction to indices and the laws of indices. This class will be handled by Samuel Aneka, popularly known as Edison. So just get your pen and your paper and let's work together. Okay, so um, let's see. Hello, good evening. This is Sami Anekan Udo, also popular known as Edison. In this video, I want to take you through the subject of indices. Wherever you are, so I'm going to explain indices. We're going to look at indices and the laws of indices. This is actually an introductory video. So what is indices? Let's assume you have A times A times A times A times A, five times. This is actually long. There's a short form. You can actually read, write this A times A times A times A times A. You can write it as A raised to five. This a times a times a times a times a five times can just be written as a with five at the top. This is actually this form is actually called the index form. So instead of writing a times a times a times a times a five times, you can just write it as a raised power five. So this is the index form. Index form. So. The A in the A index form is called the base. Why the 5 is called the index, also called the power or exponent. So 5 is the power, can also be called index, can also be called exponent. So if you want to call this a5, you are going to call it a raised to power 5, a raised to index 5, a raised to exponent 5. Okay. So now, when you're working with indices, it has rules, it has laws. So we are, we are going to look at all the laws of indices, the rules of indices, one after the other. So... The first one we're going to look at is the multiplication law. Um, before we go into the multiplication law, before we go into the multiplication law, please, I would like you to subscribe to this channel. If you've not subscribed, please go ahead and subscribe. Hit the subscribe button, hit the like button as well and click on the bell icon so that you will always be notified whenever we upload a new video when we are going live in our mathematics classes so you can also connect to us with us via our instagram handles this is our instagram account at the for real this is our whatsapp number you can also connect to us via these mediums thank you so much so we we'll continue with our, our lesson once again. We are rule one. So let's assume you have an a raised to power n times an a also raised to power n. We have the same base a but different exponent. So how are you going to simplify this? How are you going to simplify this? It's a short form. The root states that when you have an a raised to power n, n times an a raised to power n, this can be simplified as a raised to power m plus n. Okay, so all you need to do is just to bring one of the base and add the powers together, add the exponent together, add the index together, and you've got to arrive at your answer. So let's take an example. Assuming you have 5 raised to power 4 times 5 raised to power 3. 
this can be simplified as 5 raised to the power 4 plus 3. Follow, if you follow this rule, your n is your 4, your n is your 3. So this simplifies to 5 n plus n. n is 4, um, n is 3. Now 4 plus 3 is what? 7. So finally you have 5 raised to the power 7. This is your final answer. This can be applied to no matter the amount of terms you have, it still works. Let's assume you have um, 8 raised to the power 2 times 8 raised to the power 3 times 8 raised to the power 4. So this still applies no matter the amount of terms. You are just, you're just going to be, you take one of the 8, the base, and add the exponent, that is 2, 3, and 4 together. So that is going to be 2 plus 3 plus 4, which gives you 8 raised to the power, 2 plus 3 is 5, 5 plus 4 is 9. So you end up with 8 raised to the power 9, 8 raised to the power of 9, 8 raised to index 9, 8 raised to uh, exponent 9. So this is the this is rule one or law one. This is the first law of indices. This is called the multiplication rule or the multiplication law. So now we are going to move to rule two or law two, which is the division law. So I'm going to rub off, rub this off. I hope it's clear. I believe it's clear. Okay. So for the second rule, it states that when you have an a raised to power n divided by an a raised to power n that all to simplify this just take the base a we have the same base a a different power just take the, take the base one of the base write it down then it's going to be this m minus n here Okay, so this is the divisor. We'll be subtracting that power. So it's going to be m minus n. So let's apply to a real problem with numbers. So let's assume you have um, 6 raised to power 8 divided by 6 raised to power 3. This is going to simplify as 6 raised to the power, based on this now, your a is your 6, a is your 6, m is 8, n is 3. So m minus n is going to be 8 minus 3. So you have 8 minus 3. So this gives you 6 raised to the power, 8 minus 3 is what? 5. So your final answer is 6 raised to the power, 5. Okay? Okay. How about in case is written in another form, division is not written directly this way. Let's take it that you have um, x raised to power 5 divided by x raised to power 2. It's still the same thing. The law still applies here. So this is going to be x raised to power 5 minus 2, which gives you x raised to power 3. Okay, this is what you have. It's solved. Okay, so you have x raised to the power 3. So we've dealt with the division rule, the division law. This is the second rule, second law of indices. Now we are going to move on to the third law. Before I move on to the third law, I just want to let you know something that m n when you have an m and n in math m is a variable n is a variable this can be simplified as this is simply as m times n also this can also be written as m times n in bracket and you can also put the m in bracket and pull out the n 
these are various forms of written NN. Okay. So the third rule actually states that if you have a raised to power n, then bracket raised to power n, that this can be simply just be simplified as a a raised to power m times n. You just multiply the powers together, and you arrive at your answer from this analogy I just did just up here that is where we have this okay so let's take an example assuming you have um, 6 raised to power 2 and 3 power 3 outside the bracket you can just simplify this as 6 raised to power 2 times 3. You multiply the powers. 2 times 3 is what? 6. So your final answer is going to be 6 raised to power 2 times 3 is 6. Raised to power 6. Final answer. Final what? Answer. Okay, so we've arrived at our final answer here. So this is the exponent rule. This is the exponent rule. Okay? That, that is the exponent rule. So, we are going to move on to the next rule. This is rule 3. So, we are going to move on to rule 4. Or law 4. Now, for law 4, Law 4 is called the zero index index rule or law. Zero index rule or zero index law, anyone. So, what does the zero index do? What does it tell us? It tells us that when you raise a number to zero, what will be the result? What is going to be the result? Okay, before we even go to that, 2 raised to power 2, or let's say 3 raised to power 2, what is the meaning of 3 raised to power 2? 3 raised to power 2 means that 3 is multiplying itself 2 times. That is, this implies that 3 is multiplying itself. 3 raised to power 2 means 3 times 3 which is actually equals to 9. Okay? That is the implication of 3 raised to power 2. Okay? Now, 4 raised to power 3 means that 4 is actually multiplying itself 3 times. So that is 4 times 4 times 4 which gives you 64. So how about, let's say, 5 raised to power 1. What is the implication of 5 raised to power 1? That means we have just one 5. 5 raised to power 1 is the same thing as 5. 6 raised to power 1 is the same thing as 6. X raised to power 1 is the same thing as X. So, n to the raised power 1 is the number. Okay. How about when something is raised to power 0? For instance, if you have 2 raised to power 0, 3 raised to power 0, 100 raised to power 0. 2 raised to power 0 is actually equals to 1. 3 raised to the power 0 is actually equals to 1. 100 raised to the power 0 is 1. So this rule is summarized as anything raised to the power 0 is equals to 1. So I can just show you why this is so. Let's assume that we have 3 raised to the power 4 
divided by 3 raised to power 4. Okay. So now, based on the second rule, which says that a raised to power n divided by a raised to power n is same thing as a raised to power minus n minus uh, n. This is gonna be same this is gonna be equals to three raised to power four minus four. And four minus four is zero. So three raised to power four divided by three raised to power four is three raised to power zero. Okay. Now we are gonna solve this in another way. Our direct method without applying indices. So three to power four divided by three to power four is something as three to power four what three raised to power four. So three raised to power four can cancel three raised to power four to give you one. Let me break this down further. Three raised to power four is something as three times three times three times three all over three raised to power four is three times 3 times 3 times 3 3 in 3 cancel 1 3 year 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 1 3 goes in 3 1 3 goes in 3 1 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is 1 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is 1 1 divided by 1 is 1 so that means 3 divided by 3 raised to power 4 divided by 3 raised to power 4 is equal to 1 so that means 3 raised to power 4 divided by 3 raised to power 4, which gave you 3 raised to power 0. This implies that 3 raised to power 0 is equal to 1. So that is why anything raised to power 0 is equal to 1. Just have that in mind. Anything raised to power 0, whether it's a million raised to power 0, it gives you 1. So we're going to move on to the next law. Law 5. Law 5 has to do with a negative index. Negative index. For instance, if you have a raised to power minus m, a raised to power minus m can be simplified as 1 all over a raised to power m. That's the positive m. So let's apply this to a problem. Let's assume you have 6 raised to power minus 3. This is the same thing as 1 all over, based on this, what we have here. So this is going to be 1 over 6 raised to power, instead of minus 3, it's going to be 3. Okay? So this is the same thing as 1 over 2, 1, 6. 1 over 2, 1, 6. Okay? So this is 6 raised to power 3 is the same thing as 6 times 6 times 6, which gives us 2, 1, 3. Okay? So this is the negative index rule. So we're going to move on to the next rule. The next rule or law, which is law 6, has to do with a fractional index. Fractional index. So when it comes to fractional index, we're looking at fractional index right now. Like we said that a raised to the power 2 actually means a times a. a raised to the power 1 is the same thing as a. How about when you have a raised to the power half? a raised to the power half. a raised to the power 1 over 3. a raised to the power 1 over 4. How is this? How do we write this down? Generally, a raised to power 1 over n is equal to 
the n root of a this is the general rule that a raised power 1 over n is equal to the nth root of a the nth root of a okay so a raised power 1 over n is equal to the nth root of a so that implies that a raised power 1 over 4 is equals to the n will change to 4 that this is going to be the fourth root of a for this one a raised to the power 1 over 3 is going to be the, the third root of a which is the same thing as the cube root of a now this one is going to be the second root of a which is the same thing as the square root of a but for this one we're not going to put the 2, the 2 is not going to be written down we'll just write it this way as this without a 2 this is the this is pronounced as the square root of a or root a this is called root a or the square root of a you don't put a 2 but from 3, 4, 5 higher numbers you're going to make sure you include it those, ones, those numbers are included so basically this is how fractional index in which the numerator is 1 is expressed okay so let's take an example let's take an example assuming you have a 32 raised to the power 1 over 5 if you have 32 32 raised to the power 1 over 5 how would you solve this? now based on this now n is what? 5 so you're going to just put your 5 this is going to be equal to the 5th root of 32 so now you're going to break that 2 down into 5 places as a product of the same number in five places. So what do we do? Let's use the factor method to break that 32. So this is 32. 2 can go in 32. 16 times. Since 32 is even, 32 is an even number, so 2 can break it down. 16 is also even, 2 can break it down again. 2 in 16 is 8. 2 can still break down 8. It's even. 2 in 8 is 4. 2 can break down 4, 2 in 4 is 2, 2 can break down 2, 2 in 2 is 1. So 32 is actually equals to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2. So the fifth root of 32 can actually be, we can actually write it as in place of 32, we put 2 times 2 times 2. 2 times 2 times 2. This is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 places. Since it's a fifth root, it's, it's not succeeded in expressing 32 in 5 places of 2s. You just pick one of the 2. So the fifth root of 32 is equal to 2. Is equal to 2. So at the end of the day, at the end of the day, 32 raised to the power 1 over 5 is the same thing as the fifth root of 32 and it is equal to 2. Okay, so this is for fractional index. So in which the numerator is 1. How about when the numerator is not 1? So we want to create that case right now when the numerator is not actually 1 take for instance when you have a raised to power n over n in this case here the numerator is not 1 unlike this case whereby we had a raised the former case where we had a raised to power 1 over n these are two different things so how do you resolve this? how do you simplify this? 
this can be simplified in two ways but before we go ahead and simplify I just want to show you something m over n is the same thing as 1 over n times n so anyone can come first m can come first or 1 over n can come first so we can actually express this as this okay so we can decide okay let's put 1 over n in bracket and keep the m outside or we'll keep the m in bracket and keep 1 over n outside so this is the trick we're going to employ when simplifying this so based on what I've just done now this implies that a raised to power m over n is equal to a raised to power m in bracket then 1 over n outside this is one way of simplifying this or a raised to power m over n is equal to a raised to power 1 over n is in bracket then m is outside so this is another way both of them are going you are going to arrive at the same answer no matter the method you, you actually employ in simplifying this you are going to arrive at the same answer at the end of the day so let's put this to work let's put this to work right now in a scenario whereby you have um, 32 raised to power so you have 27 raised to power 2 over 3 when you have 27 raised to power 2 over 3 how do you simplify this? how are you going to simplify this? so um, when simplifying I said those two methods they can actually work but look for the one that will make life very easy for you that will make things easy for you and not complex Let, so we're going to try the two of, two of them so let me try this one whereby I put the two inside the bracket and put 1 over 3 outside 2 over 3 is same thing as 2 times 1 over 3 in the case whereby the 2 is in the bracket and the 1 over 3 is outside so then let, the other case is going to be the case whereby 1 over 3 is inside the bracket and the 2 is outside which of these two is easy to simplify? This one is much more easier to simplify. Because here, yeah, 27 raised to the power 2 is the same as 27 times 27. This is a little tedious to multiply the same. Yes, you can multiply, but it is quicker to, to work out this particular one. So how do we work out this one? 27 raised to the power 1 over 3 is the same thing as the cube root of 27 raised to power 2 in the bracket you bracket and put raised to power 2 so 27 is the same thing as um, 3 times 3 times 3 cube root 1, 2, 3 you just pick one of the 3 raised to power 2 pick one of the 3 the cube root of this is just picking one of the three then raised to power two three raised to power three is the same thing as uh, three times three which is nine this is three times three which is equals to nine so the second method is actually quicker and easier to execute okay now there are many ways of solving this thing. there are a lot of ways so if you discover any quicker method, you can actually apply it. So, like, uh, even though I did this, I didn't need to even do all this. At this point, where we have 27 raised to power 1 over 3. 27, this is 3, 27 is uh, 9, 3, 9 is 3, 3, 3 is 1. So 27 is the same thing as 3 times 3 times 3, which is equal to... 3 raised to power 3 okay so what do you do 
What did you do? Um, what did you do? 27 raised power 1 over 3. So you're, you're going to replace 27. Just the 27. 27 is the same thing as 3 to power 3. You're going to replace it with 3 raised to power 3. Now you have 1 over 3. So you're going to multiply it with this 1 over 3. That was standing already. 27 is 3 to power 3. 1 over 3 was already there. So you put your bracket raised to power 2. So now this is going to be 3 times 1 over 3. 3 up cancels 3 down. So what do you have? 1. So inside the bracket you have 3 raised to power 1. Outside you have 2. Power times power. Exponent times exponent. 1 times 2 is what? 2. So the final answer is 3 to power 2. Which is equals to 3 times 3. Which is equals to 9. So this is the final answer. So um, at this point... I'm going to end the topic at this junction. So if you have any question, you can uh, drop it in the comment section or you can WhatsApp me or connect with me on my Instagram channel, Instagram account. So watch out for the next video. continue this is not the end of indices this was just the we looked at all the laws just take some exercises and practice them alongside so and watch out for the next lesson where we're going to go deeper so please uh, if you've not subscribed to this channel make sure you subscribe to the channel like the video click on the bell icon so that you will always be notified whenever we post a new video and you can tell your friends about this channel thank you so much bye we'll meet in the next lesson thank you so much please um go ahead and subscribe to this channel and hit the like button and click on the bell icon so that you always be notified whenever we post a new video you can also connect with edison via this instagram account edison for real or on whatsapp in case you have any question or anything bothering you respect to the topic you can con connect with edison via the following social media handles Thank you so much. Now, to get the best from this lesson, just go over the lesson again with your pen and paper and try to solve the problems by yourself. If you can't solve the first time, try the second time, try the third time. And I believe at the third time, you can you get a good grasp of the lesson. Thank you so much for joining us this, this evening. God bless you and bye for now.